when you hear the word rip off, which is street language, you tend to think of a scam. Someone offers you a product, but after you purchased the product, you found out it was a fake or a counterfeit. For example, someone offered you a laptop, you bought a laptop, then you found out it was a broken second-hand laptop. What has happened? You did purchase the item. Okay, so that all went according to the common rituals. But what you received was trash, which would only cost you more and more. So you feel cheated. In fact, you have been cheated. You've been ripped off. Now, I want to talk about rip offs, not to glorify rip offs, but I want you to open your eyes to see the bigger picture behind rip offs. Because look, a rip off can only happen if there is a value that is offered onto you. Now look, if you've been ripped off, it's not your fault, okay? The other did you wrong. I just want to reveal onto you that when a predator, let's consider someone that rips you off as a predator because they want to take away something from you that they normally can't have. The predator needs to trigger you in one way or the other so that he or she can offer you something that really is not going to benefit you. So if you have expectations or ways of thinking or patterns of thinking that make you vulnerable to being ripped off, then it's important for you to see through those and be freed from them. Even if you have those unexamined thinking patterns, others shouldn't rip you off, period. But it's far better for you to be freed from unexamined expectations so that rip offs this is that the chance you're being ripped off reduces. You get what I'm saying here? Okay. When a predator wants to rip you off, he looks at your need. And your need does have to be a natural, real need. It can also be an artificial need. It also can be that you just want to be entertained. Or it can be that you want to be relieved or that you have a psychological need to be acknowledged that has been frustrated because your parents and your environment didn't give you sufficient attention. And the, I don't know what it is. The predator always look at your needs, not at, at what you're interested in. Because what you're interest, interested in is often conditioned by the environment. The condition of the environment is there, but it's your base needs, your basic needs as a human being that will drive your interests. Look, someone that's very hungry and who's about to collapse because he doesn't have food doesn't care whether it's Kentucky Fried Chicken or whether it's a vegan burger you offer him. He needs food to survive. However, when that need for food is satisfied and you come with vegan burgers or with Kentucky Fried Chicken, now he's able to select, now he's able to refuse. Why? His natural need has been met. So the natural need overrules the, the societal conditioning. Now, there are cases in which people, don't, in, in which the societal conditioning oppresses the natural needs, but in general, the natural needs overrule the societal conditioning. But often people look for answers within the societal conditioning, and that's why they remain trapped. And this is what I mean. When you have a, when you have a societal conditioning, that traps you, it frustrates your natural needs. And you do sense that you need something, but you still look for answers within the cycle conditioning. When, thi when this is you, you are the perfect victim, the perfect target for a predator. Why? Because you have a natural need that needs to be addressed, but your way of thinking has been messed up. You can only perceive things through the conditioning of society. And it's that conditioning of society that keeps you trapped. So you, you do the mud. You are in a self-destructive loop without you being aware of it. But you desperately want answers. But you can't see that it's your way of thinking and how you relate to stuff. That's the problem to begin with. So when you're in such a condition and you don't know it anymore, you are the perfect target for predators. Now, you know now how important it is to renew your mind? Okay, this is how the predator works. He sees your natural need. He doesn't care about your likes and dislikes because that has to do with conditioning. He looks at your natural need. And the predator comes by, observes you for a while. 
to see how that needs develops. What, which compensation you have to compensate the lack. Because whenever needs are frustrated, I'm talking about deep-rooted human needs, which are natural needs, people always grasp for compensations. So the predator evaluates compensations you have because he knows the compensations are, are fleeting. They're going to address a real issue. And then, after a while, the predator arrives. The predator comes with a compensation that lasts a bit longer. And because the compensation lasts a bit, bit longer, you think it's the solution. And the predator can either suggest the outcome onto you. In this case, he provokes you and triggers you into taking the bait, or he can offer the bait to you. Now, to offer the bait would mean that you are constantly aware of something being offered onto you. Now, that can work when you want to rip someone off. But it's far more effective to trigger someone into grasping after the bait. Anyway, after you receive the compensation, you are blinded by the short-term intoxication of relief. It sounds like contradiction, intoxication and relief. But what I mean with it is the following. When you're overwhelmed by being relieved, by being relaxed, you are in the same time intoxicated with distraction. So you're intoxicated by distraction because you're so relieved. When this happens, the predator got you. And he can now take away what he came to take away from you. You get what I'm saying here? That's how predators work. They are alert, they pay attention, they look at your needs, not your wants, what you want, they, or what you will, they look at your needs, and they come with an operation to trigger one of those needs, so that you that need is used to sell you something, but not to really sell something, but to give you something that appears one thing, but eventually is something else. Now look at this carefully. In order for you to rip someone off without being caught, you need to do it in such a way that they don't even notice it. For example, you may have... Uh, okay, I'm going to use a collective example now. Let's say that you have some people in the local municipality, just the local, local politics. They want to get extra money. But to get extra money, they need more tax revenue. They need to have, they need to ask more tax from the population. And here's the thing: the population is not willing to pay more taxes. They just don't want to. So, the people in the municipality come with a dark plan. They hire some mobsters, and those mobsters begin to harass random people in the community. And this goes on for weeks. Then, when people are complaining and murmuring and being fed up with the situation. Then someone comes from the media asking questions about the disturbances in, in the community. Now when this happens, the population finally has an outlet to express how frustrated they are. And they are triggered by the presence of the media to express their frustrations. And once the frustrations are expressed, they now got it on tape. So now, the people in the municipality will come with a solution. And that solution would be to have more police officers on the street. But who are going to pay the police officers? And at this point, the population is so fed up, just want, just, just want the harassment to stop. So they will do whatever they can to help with the solution, because they want a solution. So the people end up donating a lot of money to local law enforcement, but they do it through some local ministry or at the church, because the church also asks for tithes and offerings. And people can donate a lot of cash. Now, the pagan pastor of the Babylon church is part of the plot. So when people came to give extra offerings, because they think the Lord, that by doing that, the Lord's going to help them, the pagan pastor takes the extra offerings and he hands it over to his buddies, who are part of the plot. And also the donations at local ministry by the locals are also collected. Now, what has happened now? they got over one and a half million euros for free because the population donated the money because they wanted the solution. 
Now, they had to pay 4,000 euros to those mobsters to harass the people. But now they got over 1.5 million euros. They expected to get like 200,000, but now they have 1.5 million. Now, what has happened now? They ripped off the population. Why? Because those extra police officers on the street are only like 10 extra police officers. And what are 10 extra police officers going to do? Those are just men being hired to do their job and then they go home. And here's the thing, the population, because they're so relieved, they don't realize that after they donate so much money, suddenly all the harassment stopped. And that should be a red flag. If they were on harassment by some gangs, that means that after donating money, the harassment should continue and it's then that the police should come in action. But suddenly, after they donated all the money, the harassment stopped. That should alert the people that they have been ripped have been ripped off. But often the population at this point it doesn't isn't interested anymore. They got the relief and they just want to move on. So in the parable I just gave on to you, in order to rip off the population and get something from them you normally wouldn't get, you need to create a scenario in which the people become exhausted. And once they're exhausted, they want to be relieved, they want to be acknowledged. So when you get them in this desperate state that they want to be acknowledged that and, or they want to be relieved, then you give them something cheap, but because they're so desperate, they will, cons they will think it's very valuable. And that's how you get them. That's how you get people. It's very easy. But common people in general just don't see through this because they're so into their own expectations. Pagans in general, I'm not saying pagans can't be scammed. It happens, but pagans in general, they see through stuff. There are some common people out there that see through stuff, but in general, they don't. Pagans in general, they see through stuff. They look at the bigger picture. A pagan looks, look at it like this. Okay, you're being harassed by mobsters. Those are young men causing trouble. Why does young men cause in trouble? Are they, do they come from a broken home? If they come from a broken home, it means they have psychological issues. So once the psychological issues are dealt with, the harassment stops. Those men are absolutely frustrated because society ain't looking after them and human beings have a need to be taken care of. So a pagan will look at it and say, oh, dollar man, these men aren't taken care of. So when you give them someone to take care of them, they will likely give in. They will literally realize that um, acting out frustrations won't benefit them anymore. Or the pagan will look beyond. The pagan will look, okay, they are harassing people on the streets. Why didn't they, why right now? If they come from broken homes and they're from the neighborhood, they should have been harassing people all for a long time. If the harassment starts suddenly out of the blue, that the pig will realize, oh, man, something's up here, this is the plan. Then the pig will check, are they from here? Are, because, because the pig will realize someone that's frustrated, just want to act out frustration, they have no interest in complex plans. They just want to act out and be relieved. So they're not going to travel 100 kilometers to another town just to act out. Who will do that? Actors or people that are paid. So then the pagans realize, hold on a minute, these harassments started out of the blue, and those people aren't even from here, this is a plot, these people are paid. So then the pagans realize, okay, if they are paid, then who's paying them? That's how the pagan thinks. That's how the pagan evaluates things. Common people see the harassment and become upset, they just want it to end, and they will even complain at the government and ask for solutions. That's how common people are. They just want to be relieved, they just want to be left alone. And it's this mentality of wanting to be left alone that makes them vulnerable to being, to being ripped off by predators to begin with. You get what I'm saying here? And the pagan, once you realize that a lot of money has been spent to combat the problem, and the problem disappears instantly, the pagan realizes a lot of minute you've been ripped off. The common people will think, oh, shut up, man. They are doing their job, and because they're doing the job, things have been solved. Look, rip-offs often happen collectively. There are individual rip-offs, but most rip-offs happen collectively. It's far easier to rip off a collective than it's to rip off an individual. An individual can resist. An individual may notice things that don't add up and begin to ask too much questions. But a whole population, it's very easy to rip a population off, and it happens all the time. That is how the world works. In the world, the population is being ripped off. And groups use it on one another. That's how it goes in the world. Collectives are ripped off. 
Not only minorities, all is the majority that's being ripped off. Let that get, let that get through to you. Often think it's the minorities that are being exploited. But most of the time, when you look at reality, it's the majority being exploited. The minorities have some disadvantages. But because those disadvantages are... Um, zoom, because the media zooms in on those disadvantages, you may think, oh, those poor minorities, they are being ripped off. But when you look at the bigger picture, often it's the majority being ripped off. Now, how to identify a rip-off? Look at the bigger picture. Don't just look at the salesman offer you something. Look at the whole context. If the context and the content doesn't match, you know that the rip-off is going on. Here's a way pagan Christianity rips you off. They tell you that you need to win souls or else people go into the lake of fire. They tell you Christ is about to return. They gave you all these things of this is the end, these are the end times, end times, end times. So they put a lot of pressure on you to provoke you into action that something needs to be done to win souls. And at the same time, they tell you to win souls, you need to come to church every Sunday. You need to hand out leaflets and make sure people get to church, make sure people follow our regulations. So they provoke you into action, but the action they lead you to is an action that's going to frustrate you. First of all, it's about people becoming born again, not coming to church. Okay? And after people born again, after renewed in your mind. They don't tell you about renewal of the mind because your mind is not renewed. You're still stuck at Roman patterns, church patterns. So what's going on now? You are being provoked into action, and once provoked into action, you hand in your time, no, not your time, you hand in your, uh, your human effort to achieve a good goal. But what's really happening is you are being trained by Babylon, by the Babylon church into recruiting people for their cult. And at the same time, you're not appreciated. What you think is you're doing it for the Lord. And they will tell you the Lord will reward you. But here's the thing. You are working for them and they're not even paying you. They're not even acknowledging you. And if, if they acknowledge you, it's just a cheap recognition. Your time, your effort, your mental and physical strength is being used to, for them to recruit members. And once members come, the members will pay money in Tyson offerings. And to whom will, will those Tyson offerings go? To the Babylon pastor. Or to the pagan pastor, I mean. To the Babylon church. So who's benefiting here? They are. At your expense. You are being ripped, ripped off. Look. That's why I always tell you to look at the bigger picture. Some of you now, listen to what I'm saying. It's Holy Spirit using me now. Some of you are listening to this. You're going through some difficulties now. And you feel as if the Lord has ripped you off. Because you think, hold on a minute, Heavenly Father. Didn't you promise life in abundance? It's, didn't Christ can give us life and life more abundantly? Then why am I going through all of this? You feel ripped off. Listen to what I'm saying here. The Most High will never rip you off because He doesn't need to rip anyone off. He doesn't even need anything else. He doesn't need anything from anyone. And there is no darkness in Him. So you're not being ripped off by the Most High. You may feel like that because you think, hold on a minute, rest life in abundance. I'm going through difficulties. So let me explain what's going on. Your way of thinking is inverted. And here's the thing, when your way of thinking is inverted, you can easily be ripped off and you think it's something good. What's happening is, you've been made free from being an easy target. But because your mind has been conditioned by the world to be an easy target, now that things happen that go against that way of thinking, you feel trouble. And because you thought life in abundance would happen one way, what happens another way, you think you're being ripped off. You're not being ripped off. And think as it is, a lot of people feel cheated when they walk by faith because they think, why do I come so much difficulties? You encounter difficulties because you're now really walking in victory. Beforehand, you only had relief. And in a state of relief, you were exploited and taken advantage of. Now that you walk by faith, you overcome difficulties instead of having relief from difficulties. Here's the thing. Babylon churches will rip you off in the name of Christ. That's why a lot of people feel disappointed when you talk about faith with them because they associate faith with church service. While the two have nothing in common and nothing to do with one another. Look, when things are difficult in your life now, you have been freed. You see things as they are. 
So now you should be motivated by those difficulties to overcome those difficulties and overrule them. Because once you overcome and overrule them, it's over. All right? You will have some attacks here and there from the enemy, but once you've overcome, you've overcome. That's the real prosperity. But a lot of folks fall for the counterfeit, which is smooth success. And smooth success is short-lived and will always cancel out in the long run. Because smooth success will blind you to what's going on around you. And because it blinds you, it makes you extra vulnerable for predators. But you that walk by faith, the difficulties come at you, but you overcome and overrule them. That's the real success. That's the real deal. Anything else in that is a paranormal rip-off. Well, I hope this video has inspired you. A great Christ and be at peace.